Ernst Heinrich Philipp August Haeckel German NSTH Kohl the 16th of February 1834 to the 9th of August 1919 was a German biologist naturalist philosopher physician professor marine biologist and artist who discovered described and named thousands of new species mapped a genealogical tree relating all life forms and coined many terms in biology including anthropogeny ecology phylum phylogeny and protista Haeckel promoted and popularized Charles Darwin's work in Germany and developed the influential but no longer widely held recapitulation theory, "...ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny," claiming that an individual organism's biological development, or ontogeny, parallels and summarizes its species' evolutionary development, or phylogeny. The published artwork of Haeckel includes over 100 detailed, multi-color illustrations of animals and sea creatures, collected in his Kunstformen der Natur Art Forms of Nature. As a philosopher, Ernst Haeckel wrote Die Weltratzel (1895–1899) in English, The Riddle of the Universe (1901), the genesis for the term "world riddle," Weltratzel, and Freedom in Science and Teaching to Support Teaching Evolution. Life Ernst Haeckel was born on 16 February 1834, in Potsdam then part of Prussia. In 1852, Haeckel completed studies at the Domgymnasium, the Cathedral High School of Merseburg. He then studied medicine in Berlin and Würzburg, particularly with Albert von Kolliker, Franz Leidig, Rudolf Virchow with whom he later worked briefly as assistant, and with the anatomist-physiologist Johannes Peter Müller Together with Hermann Studner he attended botany lectures in Würzburg. In 1857, Haeckel attained a doctorate in medicine, and afterwards he received the license to practice medicine. The occupation of physician appeared less worthwhile to Haeckel. After contact with suffering patients, Haeckel studied under Karl Gegenbauer for three years, earning a habilitation in comparative anatomy in 1861, before becoming a professor of zoology at the University of Jena, where he remained for 47 years, from 1862 to 1909. Between 1859 and 1866, Haeckel worked on many phyla such as radiolarians, porophorans, sponges, and annelids. Segmented worms. During a trip to the Mediterranean, Haeckel named nearly 150 new species of radiolarians. From 1866 to 1867, Haeckel made an extended journey to the Canary Islands with Hermann Foll and during this period, met with Charles Darwin. In 1866 at Down House in Kent, Thomas Huxley and Charles Lyell. In 1867, he married Agnes Hushke. Their son Walter was born in 1868, their daughters Elizabeth in 1871 and Emma in 1873. In 1869, he traveled as a researcher to Norway, in 1871 to Croatia lived on the island of Havar in a monastery, and in 1873 to Egypt, Turkey, and to Greece. Haeckel retired from teaching in 1909, and in 1910 he withdrew from the Evangelical Church of Prussia. On the occasion of his 80th birthday celebration, he was presented with a two volume work, entitled Was W.I.R. Ernst Haeckel Verdanken, What We Owe to Ernst Haeckel, edited at the request of the German Ministenbund by Heinrich Schmidt of Jena. Haeckel's wife, Agnes, died in 1915, and Haeckel became substantially frailer, with a broken leg thigh, and broken arm. He sold his Villa Medusa. In Jena in 1918 to the Carl Zeiss Foundation, and it presently contains a historic library. Haeckel died on 9 August 1919. Haeckel was the most famous proponent of monism in Germany. Politics Haeckel's political beliefs were influenced by his affinity for the German Romantic movement coupled with his acceptance of a form of Lamarckism. Rather than being a strict Darwinian, Haeckel believed that the characteristics of an organism were acquired through interactions with the environment and that ontogeny reflected phylogeny. He believed the social sciences to be instances of applied biology, and that phrase was picked up and used for Nazi propaganda. In 1906, Haeckel founded a group called the Monist League to promote his religious and political beliefs. This group lasted until 1933 and included such notable members as Wilhelm Ostwald, Georg von Arco, Helena Stocker and Walter Arthur Berenson. First World War 
Haeckel was the first person known to use the term, First World War. Shortly after the start of the war, Haeckel wrote, There is no doubt that the course and character of the feared European War less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 will become the First World War in the full sense of the word. The European War became known as the Great War, and it was not until 1920, in the book, The First World War 1914 1918. By Charles A. Court Reppington, that the term, First World War, was used as the official name for the conflict. Research Haeckel was a zoologist, an accomplished artist and illustrator, and later a professor of comparative anatomy. Although Haeckel's ideas are important to the history of evolutionary theory, and although he was a competent invertebrate anatomist most famous for his work on radiolaria, many speculative concepts that he championed are now considered incorrect. For example, Haeckel described and named hypothetical ancestral microorganisms that have never been found. He was one of the first to consider psychology as a branch of physiology. He also proposed the kingdom protista in 1866. His chief interests lay in evolution and life development processes in general, including development of nonrandom form, which culminated in the beautifully illustrated Kunstformen der Natur art forms of nature. Haeckel did not support natural selection, rather believing in Lamarckism. Haeckel advanced a version of the earlier recapitulation theory previously set out by Étienne Serre in the 1820s and supported by followers of Étienne Geoffroy St. Hilaire including Robert Edmund Grant. It proposed a link between ontogeny development of form and phylogeny evolutionary descent, summed up by Haeckel in the phrase, "...ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny." His concept of recapitulation has been refuted in the form he gave it now called, "...strong recapitulation," in favor of the ideas first advanced by Karl Ernst von Baer. The strong recapitulation hypothesis views ontogeny as repeating forms of adult ancestors, while weak recapitulation means that what is repeated and built upon is the ancestral embryonic development process. Haeckel supported the theory with embryo drawings that have since been shown to be oversimplified and in part inaccurate, and the theory is now considered an oversimplification of quite complicated relationships. Haeckel introduced the concept of heterochrony, the change in timing of embryonic development over the course of evolution. Haeckel was a flamboyant figure, who sometimes took great, non scientific leaps from available evidence. For example, at the time when Darwin published On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, 1859, Haeckel postulated that evidence of human evolution would be found in the Dutch East Indies. Now Indonesia. At that time, no remains of human ancestors had yet been identified. He described these theoretical remains in great detail and even named the as yet unfound species, Pithecanthropus ololus, and instructed his students such as Richard and Oscar Hertwig to go and find it. One student did find some remains, a Dutchman named Eugene Dubois searched the East Indies from 1887 to 1895, discovering the remains of Java Man in 1891, consisting of a skullcap, thighbone, and a few teeth. These remains are among the oldest hominid remains ever found. Dubois classified Java man with Haeckel's Pithecanthropus label, though they were later reclassified as Homo erectus. Some scientists of the day suggested Dubois Java man as a potential intermediate form between modern humans and the common ancestor we share with the other great apes. The current consensus of anthropologists is that the direct ancestors of modern humans were African populations of Homo erectus possibly Homo ergaster, rather than the Asian populations exemplified by Java man and Peking man. Ironically, a new human species, Homo floresiensis, a dwarf human type, has recently been discovered in the island of Flores. Topic. Polygenism and racial theory The creationist polygenism of Samuel George Morton and Louis Agassiz, which presented human races as separately created species, was rejected by Charles Darwin, who argued for the monogenesis of the human species and the African origin of modern humans. In contrast to most of Darwin's supporters, Haeckel put forward a doctrine of evolutionary polygenism based on the ideas of the linguist August Schleicher, in which several different language groups had arisen separately from speechless prehuman Ermenschen German, proto-humans, which themselves had evolved from simian ancestors. 
These separate languages had completed the transition from animals to man, and, under the influence of each main branch of languages, humans had evolved, in a kind of Lamarckian use inheritance, as separate species, which could be subdivided into races. From this, Haeckel drew the implication that languages with the most potential yield the human races with the most potential, led by the Semitic and Indo-Germanic groups, with Berber, Jewish, Greco-Roman and Germanic varieties to the fore. As Haeckel stated, we must mention here one of the most important results of the comparative study of languages, which for the Stambaum of the species of men is of the highest significance, namely that human languages probably had a multiple or polyphyletic origin. Human language as such probably developed only after the species of speechless Ermenschen or Affenmenschen German, ape men, had split into several species or kinds. With each of these human species, language developed on its own and independently of the others. At least this is the view of Schleicher, one of the foremost authorities on this subject. If one views the origin of the branches of language as the special and principal act of becoming human, and the species of humankind as distinguished according to their language stem, then one can say that the different species of men arose independently of one another. Haeckel's view can be seen as a forerunner of the views of Carlton Kuhn, who also believed that human races evolved independently and in parallel with each other. These ideas eventually fell from favor. Haeckel also applied the hypothesis of polygenism to the modern diversity of human groups. He became a key figure in social Darwinism and leading proponent of scientific racism, stating for instance, The Caucasian, or Mediterranean man Homo Mediterraneus, has from time immemorial been placed at the head of all the races of men, as the most highly developed and perfect. It is generally called the Caucasian race, but as, among all the varieties of the species, the Caucasian branch is the least important, we prefer the much more suitable appellation proposed by Friedrich Müller, namely, that of Mediterranees. For the most important varieties of this species, which are moreover the most eminent actors in what is called universal history, first rose to a flourishing condition on the shores of the Mediterranean. This species alone with the exception of the Mongolian has had an actual history, it alone has attained to that degree of civilization which seems to raise men above the rest of nature. Haeckel divided human beings into ten races, of which the Caucasian was the highest and the primitives were doomed to extinction. Haeckel claimed that t he Negro had stronger and more freely movable toes than any other race, which, he argued, was evidence of their being less evolved, and which led him to compare them to four-handed apes. Haeckel also believed Negroes were savages and that whites were the most civilized, however, Robert J. Richards notes, Haeckel, on his travels to Ceylon and Indonesia, often formed closer and more intimate relations with natives, even members of the untouchable classes, than with the European colonials. In his Ontology and Phylogeny Harvard paleontologist Stephen J. Gould wrote, Haeckel's evolutionary racism, his call to the German people for racial purity and unflinching devotion to a just state, his belief that harsh, inexorable laws of evolution ruled human civilization and nature alike, conferring upon favored races the right to dominate others, all contributed to the rise of Nazism. In his introduction to the Nazi Party ideologue Alfred Rosenberg's 1930 book, The Myth of the Twentieth Century, Peter Peel affirms that Rosenberg had indeed read Haeckel. In the same line of thought, historian Daniel Gassman states that Haeckel's ideology stimulated the birth of fascist ideology in Italy and France. Asia hypothesis Haeckel claimed the origin of humanity was to be found in Asia, he believed that Hindustan Indian subcontinent was the actual location where the first humans had evolved. Haeckel argued that humans were closely related to the primates of Southeast Asia and rejected Darwin's hypothesis of Africa. Haeckel later claimed that the missing link was to be found on the lost continent of Lemuria located in the Indian Ocean. He believed that Lemuria was the home of the first humans and that Asia was the home of many of the earliest primates. He thus supported that Asia was the cradle of hominid evolution. Haeckel also claimed that Lemuria connected Asia and Africa, which allowed the migration of humans to the rest of the world. In Haeckel's book The History of Creation, 1884, he included migration routes which he thought the first humans had used outside of Lemuria. <laughs> Embryology and recapitulation theory 
When Haeckel was a student in the 1850s he showed great interest in embryology, attending the rather unpopular lectures twice and in his notes sketched the visual aids, textbooks had few illustrations, and large format plates were used to show students how to see the tiny forms under a reflecting microscope, with the translucent tissues seen against a black background. Developmental series were used to show stages within a species, but inconsistent views and stages made it even more difficult to compare different species. It was agreed by all European evolutionists that all vertebrates looked very similar at an early stage, in what was thought of as a common ideal type, but there was a continuing debate from the 1820s between the romantic recapitulation theory that human embryos developed through stages of the forms of all the major groups of adult animals, literally manifesting a sequence of organisms on a linear chain of being, and Karl Ernst von Bayer's opposing view, stated in von Bayer's Laws of Embryology, that the early general forms diverged into four major groups of specialized forms without ever resembling the adult of another species, showing affinity to an archetype but no relation to other types or any transmutation of species. By the time Haeckel was teaching he was able to use a textbook with woodcut illustrations written by his own teacher Albert von Kolliker, which purported to explain human development while also using other mammalian embryos to claim a coherent sequence. Despite the significance to ideas of transformism, this was not really polite enough for the new popular science writing, and was a matter for medical institutions and for experts who could make their own comparisons. <laughs> Darwin, Natter philosophy and Lamarck Darwin's On the Origin of Species, which made a powerful impression on Haeckel when he read it in 1864, was very cautious about the possibility of ever reconstructing the history of life, but did include a section reinterpreting von Bayer's embryology and revolutionizing the field of study, concluding that, "...embryology rises greatly in interest, when we thus look at the embryo as a picture, more or less obscured, of the common parent form of each great class of animals." It mentioned von Bayer's 1828 anecdote misattributing it to Louis Agassiz that at an early stage embryos were so similar that it could be impossible to tell whether an unlabeled specimen was of a mammal, a bird, or of a reptile, and Darwin's own research using embryonic stages of barnacles to show that they are crustaceans, while cautioning against the idea that one organism or embryonic stage is higher, or lower, or more or less evolved. Haeckel disregarded such caution, and in a year wrote his massive and ambitious General Morphology, published in 1866, presenting a revolutionary new synthesis of Darwin's ideas with the German tradition of Natter philosophy going back to Goethe and with the progressive evolutionism of Lamarck in what he called Darwinismus. He used morphology to reconstruct the evolutionary history of life, in the absence of fossil evidence using embryology as evidence of ancestral relationships. He invented new terms, including ontogeny and phylogeny, to present his evolutionized recapitulation theory that ontogeny recapitulated phylogeny. The two massive volumes sold poorly, and were heavy going. With his limited understanding of German, Darwin found them impossible to read. Haeckel's publisher turned down a proposal for a strictly scholarly and objective second edition. Topic: <laughs> Embryological drawings. Haeckel's aim was a reformed morphology with evolution as the organizing principle of a cosmic synthesis unifying science, religion, and art. He was giving successful, popular lectures on his ideas to students and townspeople in Jena, in an approach pioneered by his teacher Rudolf Virchow. To meet his publisher's need for a popular work he used a student's transcript of his lectures as the basis of his Naderliche Schopfungsgeschichte of 1868, presenting a comprehensive presentation of evolution. In the spring of that year he drew figures for the book, synthesizing his views of specimens in Jena and published pictures to represent types. After publication he told a colleague that the images are completely exact, partly copied from nature, partly assembled from all illustrations of these early stages that have hitherto become known. There were various styles of embryological drawings at that time, ranging from more schematic representations to naturalistic illustrations of specific specimens. Haeckel believed privately that his figures were both exact and synthetic, and in public asserted that they were schematic like most figures used in teaching. The images were reworked to match in size and orientation, and though displaying Haeckel's own views of essential features, they support von Bayer's concept that vertebrate embryos begin similarly and then diverge. 
Relating different images on a grid conveyed a powerful evolutionary message. As a book for the general public, it followed the common practice of not citing sources. The book sold very well, and while some anatomical experts hostile to Haeckel's evolutionary views expressed some private concerns that certain figures had been drawn rather freely, the figures showed what they already knew about similarities in embryos. The first published concerns came from Ludwig Ruttimeyer, a professor of zoology and comparative anatomy at the University of Basel who had placed fossil mammals in an evolutionary lineage early in the 1860s and had been sent a complimentary copy. At the end of 1868 his review in the Archive für Anthropology wondered about the claim that the work was popular and scholarly, doubting whether the second was true, and expressed horror about such public discussion of man's place in nature with illustrations such as the evolutionary trees being shown to non-experts. Though he made no suggestion that embryo illustrations should be directly based on specimens, to him the subject demanded the utmost scrupulosity and conscientiousness, and an artist must not arbitrarily model or generalize his originals for speculative purposes," which he considered proved by comparison with works by other authors. In particular, "...one and the same, moreover incorrectly interpreted woodcut, is presented to the reader three times in a row and with three different captions as the embryo of the dog, the chick, and the turtle." He accused Haeckel of "...playing fast and loose with the public and with science." and failing to live up to the obligation to the truth of every serious researcher. Haeckel responded with angry accusations of bowing to religious prejudice, but in the second 1870 edition changed the duplicated embryo images to a single image captioned, Embryo of a mammal or bird. Duplication using galvanoplastic stereotypes cliches was a common technique in textbooks, but not on the same page to represent different eggs or embryos. In 1891 Haeckel made the excuse that this extremely rash foolishness," had occurred in undue haste but was bona fide, and since repetition of incidental details was obvious on close inspection, it is unlikely to have been intentional deception. The revised 1870 second edition of 1,500 copies attracted more attention, being quickly followed by further revised editions with larger print runs as the book became a prominent part of the optimistic, nationalist, anticlerical culture of progress in Otto von Bismarck's New German Empire. The similarity of early vertebrate embryos became common knowledge, and the illustrations were praised by experts such as Michael Foster of the University of Cambridge. In the introduction to his 1871 The Descent of Man, and selection in relation to sex, Darwin gave particular praise to Haeckel, writing that if Natterlich's Schopfungsgeschichte had appeared before my essay had been written, I should probably never have completed it. The first chapter included an illustration. As some of my readers may never have seen a drawing of an embryo, I have given one of man and another of a dog, at about the same early stage of development, carefully copied from two works of undoubted accuracy, with a footnote citing the sources and noting that, Hackel has also given analogous drawings in his Schopfungsgeschichte. The fifth edition of Haeckel's book appeared in 1874, with its frontispiece a heroic portrait of Haeckel himself, replacing the previous controversial image of the heads of apes and humans. Topic. Controversy Later in 1874, Haeckel's simplified embryology textbook Anthropogeny made the subject into a battleground over Darwinism aligned with Bismarck's Kulturkampf culture struggle against the Catholic Church. Haeckel took particular care over the illustrations, changing to the leading zoological publisher Wilhelm Engelmann of Leipzig and obtaining from them use of illustrations from their other textbooks as well as preparing his own drawings including a dramatic double-page illustration showing early, somewhat later, and still later stages of eight different vertebrates. Though Haeckel's views had attracted continuing controversy, there had been little dispute about the embryos and he had many expert supporters, but Wilhelm has revived the earlier criticisms and introduced new attacks on the 1874 illustrations. Others joined in, both expert anatomists and Catholic priests and supporters were politically opposed to Haeckel's views, while it has been widely claimed that Haeckel was charged with fraud by five professors and convicted by a university court at Jena, there does not appear to be an independently verifiable source for this claim. 
Recent analyses Richardson 1998, Richardson and Kuk 2002 have found that some of the criticisms of Haeckel's embryo drawings were legitimate, but others were unfounded. There were multiple versions of the embryo drawings, and Haeckel rejected the claims of fraud. It was later said that, "...there is evidence of sleight of hand." On both sides of the feud between Haeckel and Wilhelm his. Robert J. Richards, in a paper published in 2008, defends the case for Haeckel, shedding doubt against the fraud accusations based on the material used for comparison with what Haeckel could access at the time. The controversy involves several different issues see more details at, recapitulation theory. Topic. Awards and honors He was awarded the title of Excellency by Kaiser Wilhelm II in 1907 and the Linnean Society of London's prestigious Darwin Wallace Medal in 1908. In the United States, Mount Haeckel, a 13,418 feet 4 meters summit in the eastern Sierra Nevada, overlooking the Evolution Basin, is named in his honor, as is another Mount Haeckel, a 2,941 meters 9 feet summit in New Zealand, and the asteroid 12,323 Haeckel. Publications Darwin's 1859 book on the origin of species had immense popular influence, but although its sales exceeded its publisher's hopes it was a technical book rather than a work of popular science, long, difficult and with few illustrations. One of Haeckel's books did a great deal to explain his version of Darwinism to the world. It was a best-selling, provocatively illustrated book in German, titled Natterliche Schopfungsgeschichte, published in Berlin in 1868, and translated into English as The History of Creation in 1876. It was frequently reprinted until 1926. Haeckel argued that human evolution consisted of precisely 22 phases, the 21st, the missing link, being a halfway step between apes and humans. He even formally named this missing link Pithecanthropus ololus, translated as, Ape Man Without Speech. Haeckel's literary output was extensive, including many books, scientific papers, and illustrations. Monographs <inaudible> 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 Calcareous sponges 1872 Topic Challenger reports Deep Sea Medusae 1881 Siphonophora 1888 Deep Sea Caratosa 1889 Radiolaria 1887 Topic Books on biology and its philosophy Generelle Morphologie der Organismen, Allgemeine Grundsuche der Organischen Formen Wissenschaft, Mechanische Begründet durch die von Charles Darwin Reformierte Descendants Theory, 1866, Berlin. Natterliche Schopfungsgeschichte, 1868, in English The History of Creation, 1876, 6th ed., New York, D. Appleton & Co., 1914, two volumes. Frey Wissenschaft und Freie Lehre 1877, in English, Freedom in Science and Teaching Die Systematische Phylogenie 1894. Systematic Phylogeny. Anthropogeny oder Entwicklungsgeschichte des Menschen. Anthropogeny, or, The Evolutionary History of Man. 1874. Die Weltratzel 1895 also spelled Die Weltratzel in English The Riddle of the Universe, 1901 Uber unsere Gegenwartige Kenntnis vom Erspring des Menschen 1898. In English The Last Link, 1898 Der Kampf um den Entwicklungsgedenken 1905. In English Last Words on Evolution, 1906 Die Lebenswunder 1904. In English The Wonders of Life Kristallseelen, Studien über das Anorganische Leben 1917. Topic. Travel books Indisch Reisbrief 1882. Travel Notes of India Aus Insuland, Malayisch Reisbrief 1901. Travel Notes of Malaysia 
Kunstformen der Natur 1904 Art Forms of Nature Digital Edition 1924 Wanderbilder 1905 Travel Images A Visit to Salon for a fuller list of works of and about Haeckel see his entry in the German Wikisource Topic See also Disteleology Embryology Haeckelites Haeckel's Tale Heinrich Schmidt philosopher Karl Blossfeld List of wildlife artists Proteus 2004 film Topic Footnotes Topic Sources Darwin, Charles 1859. On the Origin of Species. London, John Murray. Darwin, Charles, Costa, James T. 2011. The Annotated Origin. Harvard, Harvard University Press. Darwin, Charles 1871. The Descent of Man. London, John Murray. Desmond, Adrian J. 1989. The Politics of Evolution, Morphology, Medicine, and Reform in Radical London. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-14374-0. External links E. Haeckel, Natterliche Schopfungsgeschichte 1868 front page of first edition, German E. Haeckel, Die Weltratzel 1899 front page of first edition, German University of California, Berkeley Biography Ernst Haeckel, Evolution's Controversial Artist. A slideshow essay Kunstformen der Natur from Biolab. De PNG Alpha Transparencies of Haeckel's Kunstformen der Natur Proteus — Animated documentary film on Haeckel's life and work Ernst Haeckel House and Museum in Jena View works by Haeckel at the Biodiversity Heritage Library Adiatumea, artificial life experiment with 3D-generated diatoms, influenced by Haeckel Images from Anthropogeny, Odor, and Twicklingsgeschichte des Menschen Works by Ernst Haeckel at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Ernst Haeckel at Internet Archive Works by Ernst Haeckel at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Newspaper clippings about Ernst Haeckel in the 20th Century Press Archives of the German National Library of Economics ZBW.